The Struggles of a Modern Day Vampire by Miraculous Emily 47 Read by My Lost and Found Summary After Midoriya Izuku is turned into a vampire towards the end of his first year at UA, he decides he wants to tell his classmates about his condition. The only problem is, he can't physically say the words, and his classmates are fucking idiots. Izuku hadn't always been like this. Hell, he hadn't even been like this for more than a year. Yet, even so, it felt like forever. If someone had come up to him a year ago and told him that vampires were real, he probably would have laughed in their face. Sure, vampire quirks were real, the League of Villains own Toga Himiko as an example, but actual mythological vampires? No way. It wasn't really that hard to believe, in all honesty. After all, superpowers had evolved out of nowhere, hadn't they? Now, at the end of his second year at UA, Izuku knew better than anyone that vampires were real. He'd been turned into one, after all. It was a freak accident of sorts, or so his vampire father had said. He was walking home from his mother's house one weekend after the final battle was over, when he'd been tackled into an alley by a random stranger. Izuku was so surprised that he didn't try to power up his quirk quickly enough. It had cost him his life in the end. By the time he lit up 22%, sharp teeth were already digging into his neck. Something in the vampire's venom knocked him out, and when he woke up an hour and a half later, it was without a heartbeat. The vampire was a guy named Tayama Neri, who only looked about 20, but was apparently over 300 years old. He had been born a hundred years before quirks appeared, which made him quirkless, although he used his vampire attributes as a sort of quirk. He had gone too long without blood, so he'd been wandering the streets looking for a homeless person to knock out and drink from, someone who wouldn't be believed if they raved about vampires, in case Tayama's toxic fangs didn't erase their memory. Izuku had walked by the alley, apparently smelling very, very good. It made Tayama lose control. Izuku didn't know if the scent had something to do with the power of one for all or not. All he did know was that he was very glad he still had a quirk after he woke up dead. Well, undead. Tayama spent a few hours walking around town with Izuku, explaining the ins and out of vampirism. Apparently, they were able to walk around during the day just fine. They reacted to garlic as if they were violently allergic, meaning they would throw up violently if they ingested any. Crosses and silver didn't do anything to them, and they could see their reflections in mirrors, unless they were starving. That one didn't really make sense to Izuku, but whatever. They also had venom in their fangs that knocked out their prey, and unless they were immune or turned, would erase their memories of ever being attacked. To turn a person, the vampires would have to drain them nearly dry of all of their blood, before they would have to bleed into the victim's mouth to revive them. Tayama had never killed anyone before, and he'd freak the fuck out when he came to after killing Izuku. His only option was to turn Izuku and hope he wouldn't hate him when he woke up. Izuku didn't necessarily hate Tayama, but he was also not happy with him. He would look like a 17-year-old forever now, or until he was killed. So a wooden stake to the heart does kill vampires? Well, yeah, who wouldn't that kill? Tayama left Izuku in front of Yue's gates with his contact information and a warning to pick his meals carefully. Izuku would only need to feed once a week or so, which was good news. It meant he wouldn't have to worry about hurting innocent people too often, even if they wouldn't remember it or feel anything. There was just one very annoying part of being a vampire. Unless someone outright asked him if he was a vampire, Izuku couldn't tell anyone. No, seriously. He physically couldn't tell anyone. He tried to tell Kachon immediately after he got back to UA because he was basically incapable of keeping secrets from the guy, but his throat hadn't been able to utter the words. 
he found it wasn't just because it was Kachan when he tried to tell Uraka later that night. Thus began the most irritating sequence of events Azuku had ever lived through. 1. Sleep Holy shit! Izuku whirled around, staring wide-eyed at the person that had just walked in on him. He was in the middle of the Heights Alliance kitchen, sipping some apple juice while he scrolled through hero analysis posts on his phone. The best part about being a vampire was that he's still able to consume liquids other than blood, although he could no longer eat human food. Usually, he was able to get away with it during dinners, with the class by picking at his plate and then throwing up whatever he had consumed later when he was alone. Kaminari Denki was standing in the doorway of the kitchen, clutching at his chest like a maiden. Good lord, you scared the shit out of me! What are you doing awake? The blonde checked the clock on the microwave. It's almost 4 a.m. I don't sleep, Izuku replied, raising an eyebrow at Kaminari. He wasn't expecting anything to come out of this hint, considering the fact that not even the smartest kids in the class had picked up on his hinting yet. Do you have nightmares or something? Kaminari asked, wandering to the fridge so he could dig out a water bottle. Izuku shook his head, taking another long sip of his juice. Nope. I mean, I literally don't sleep. Ever. Kaminari turned around looking surprised. What? Is that a side effect of your quirk or something? I never knew that about you. Something like that. Izuku muttered, sighing. He went back to scrolling on his phone for a moment before a thought occurred to him. Why are you awake anyway? I'm not sure, the older boy answered. It just happens sometimes. I think Hitoshi is rubbing off on me. Shinzo Hitoshi was Kaminari's boyfriend. He had replaced Medata Minoru at the end of first year, right after the final battle, when the grape-headed pervert dropped out. Turned out, he didn't have the balls to be a hero. Go figure. Uh, I see. Azuku nodded. Well, you'll have to wake up for school soon. Will you be okay? I should be fine. Kaminari nodded, capping his water bottle again. I'll see you after class, bro. I would say get some sleep, but... He laughed. Izuku smiled along with him and waved him along, bringing all his attention back to his phone. 2. Skin Hey, Midoriya, can I have a turn next? Ojiro asked, leaning over Izuku's shoulder to stare at the flat screen. What had begun as Asui and Izuku having a Mario Kart war had turned into the entirety of Class 2A battling it out for the title of champion. Suyu had ended up the victor, and now everyone was taking turns playing against each other. Azuku turned around to Ojiro and nodded. Sure, let me just beat this race first. He smiled. Ojiro nodded and patiently waited. Azuku got first place against Tokoyami, Ida, and Sato, cheering for himself before he passed the controller back to Ojiro. Ojiro's hand brushed against Azuku's during the pass, and much to everyone's surprise, the boy screamed a little and dropped the controller. Everyone turned to stare at him, but his eyes were dead fixed on Izuku's hand, which was still outstretched. Izuku, concerned about his classmates as always, turned fully around on the couch until he was sitting on his knees. Are you all right, Ojiro? That was quite a scream. Your... your hand. Ojiro sputtered, pointing at Izuku's hand. It's so cold! It's like... like... Like a corpse? Izuku said, his heart pounding in his chest. This could finally be it! He's been trying to tell his classmates about his condition for forever now. To no avail. This was the first time anyone had been so close to making the connection. Yes, that! Ojiro nodded. What the heck, man? Why are you so cold? I'm dead. Izuku deadpanned. The room was silent for a moment, before Tokoyami nodded solemnly. I too feel dead inside, Midoriya. Yeah, big mood, Sero said. Are you anemic, Deku? Ochako asked, concerned. She reached out and pressed the back of her hand against his forehead, physically jumping up in surprise when she felt his temperature. Oh, wow! Ojiro wasn't kidding! You're like ice! No, I'm not anemic, 
Azuku sighed. I get plenty of iron. Trust me. The nerd's always been like a popsicle. Kachan grumbled, leaning past Ochako and Asui's bodies on the same couch as Azuku so he could put himself to Nizuku's line of sight. I'm not surprised he hasn't changed. No! Shut up, Kachan! They are so close! Azuku's inner voice wailed. If you say so. Todoroki shook his head. Ida, may I have your controller next? God damn it! Three. Blood. Whoa, what's that you're drinking, bro? Kirishima asked, pointing at the clear reusable water bottle Izuku was holding. Izuku looked down at the contents, internally pumping a fist with joy that someone had finally noticed. Their class was in the middle of training, doing simple one-on-one -on -one sparring sessions without quirks. Kirishima was Izuku's partner for the last round, so they had gone to take a water break together. It's blood. Izuku said, taking a long, slow sip of his blood. It really was what he said it was. Toyama had been able to secure him a blood bag or two from a buddy of his who worked at a blood bank. The man had been quietly amused at Izuku's antics, and had even given him a few ideas for trying to tell his friends what he was. He wasn't against the idea of everyone figuring out, considering how well-known Class 1A was from all the numerous attacks that had been launched against them throughout their high school career. No, seriously, dude. What is it? Kirishima chuckled. Is it part of a new diet or something? I've been meaning to go try another one to trim down a bit. He patted his rock-hard stomach. I've been getting a little soft because of Sato's new carrot cake frenzy. I'm serious. It really is blood. Izuku protested. He held out the straw of his bottle for Kirishima. Do you want to taste some? I don't know. The flu has been going around lately. I don't want to transfer any germs. Kirishima trailed off. Just tell me, does the diet work or not? Izuku rolled his eyes to the ceiling of the sparring gym. No, it does not. Man, that sucks. You have no idea. Four. Pasta. Dinner is ready, mon ami. Aoyama called, sticking his head out from the kitchen into the common room. Ever since they had moved into the dorms, Class A had taken to making and eating dinners together every single night. Tonight was Aoyama and Ashido's turn to make dinner, which was usually hit or miss. Since all food only really tasted like cardboard to Izuku now, he didn't care either way. The class was filed into the dining room, chatting and talking to each other while they took their unofficial seats. Izuku always sat towards the end of the table, with Uraraka on one side and Todoroki on the other. Directly across from him sat Kachan, with Kirishima on one side and Jiro on the other. Once everyone was settled in, Ashido and Aoyama brought out the main dishes for the night, which appeared to be a pasta of some sort. Next was some bread that Izuku steadfastly planned to avoid, since it looked like there was garlic on it. Lastly, they brought out a salad for everyone. All in all, it was a meal that made Izuku miss eating human food. Even so, he took small portions for himself and began picking through them. The salad was the easiest to go down, since without dressing, it tasted more like water than anything else. Once he was done with that, he ate a few forkfuls of the pasta. Almost immediately after eating his fourth forkful of the stuff, he realized something was wrong. His tongue was beginning to burn like he'd eaten a chili pepper, and his stomach was already rolling unpleasantly. He snapped his head to look at Ashido, who was sitting next to Kirishima. Did you guys put garlic in the pasta? Ashido looked back at him questioningly. Izuku had been louder than he'd meant to be. Um, yeah. Why? Mother... Azuku scraped his chair back and bolted out of the room, using a couple percents of his quirk to aid him. He burst into the men's locker room on the first floor, nearly breaking the door off its hinges in his haste. He barely made it over a toilet before he was throwing up the entire contents of his stomach. Since it had been a few days since he'd fed, which meant all the blood he drank was already in his veins, all that really consisted of was the salad he'd eaten and whatever liquids he had consumed that day. Midoriya, what? 
Sarah's eyes widened as he caught sight of Izuku bent over the toilet bowl. Oh man, are you allergic to garlic or something? The greenette nodded miserably, moaning in pain. His stomach felt like it was being stabbed repeatedly. He was beginning to question whether or not Tayama was right about garlic not killing vampires. What the fuck? A new voice boomed, echoing off the walls with how loud it was. Azuku winced, his head hurting a bit in the way it might after a hangover. Can I even get drunk anymore? I'll have to try that out. Deku, since when are you allergic to garlic? For about a year now. Izuku mumbled. I've heard of allergies developing later in life, kiddo. Sue, this is the men's room. Are you naked? No. Then it's fine. Just leave me alone. Izuku groaned, dry heaving over the bowl once more. Nothing came out, of course, but that didn't make the sensation feel any better. I'll live. Well, I'll continue to exist, at least. Is there anything we can do? Saro asked. Let's just leave him, Kotsky said. If anyone understood not wanting people to see you at your lowest, it was him. If he said he'll be okay, then he will. Someone should really stay with him, Gettle, Suyu said. I'll do it. Get the fuck out, extras. Izuku waited, listening until the footsteps left the room. He was aware of Kachan's presence behind him. He could see his shadow standing in the door of the stall. Okay, seriously, since when have you been allergic to garlic? I told you, about a year now. Izuku moaned. You don't know everything about me. Um, yes I fucking do. Katsuki snapped. You can't not tell me shit. You're physically incapable of it, you damn nerd. You'd be surprised. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Izuku turned his head to glare at Katsuki over his shoulder, swallowing hard against his nausea. I'm allergic to garlic, Kachan. What else is allergic to garlic? Katsuki furrowed his brow, thinking... After a few moments, he lifted his hand in surrender. I don't know, fucking vampires or something? Izuku nodded his head and pointed at Kotsky. Yes! Okay. Bakugo frowned. Are you fucking sick or what? Do I need to drag your ass to recovery, girl? No. Ugh. Izuku whined. Whether it was an answer to the blonde's question, or a lament of the missed opportunity, even he wasn't sure. Whatever. Kotsky shrugged. Just hurry the fuck up, would you? My pasta's getting cold. Five. Fangs. Zuku stared at himself in the locker room mirror on the first floor, his jaw wide open so that he could quickly get a good look of his teeth. He wasn't sure if it was some sort of protective instinct, but he'd found out quickly that he couldn't get his fangs to show unless he was hungry and about to bite someone. If it weren't for the fact that he didn't want to hurt any of his classmates, he would have bitten one of them already just to prove what he was. They're idiots, he mumbled to himself, opening his jaw wider. He tried for the umpteenth time to will his fangs to appear to no avail. All he got out of the experience was an aching jaw. Who the hell misses these signs except idiots? The door to the locker room swung open, startling Izuku into turning to face the intruder. It was Shinso Hitoshi, the resident insomniac of Class 2A. Given the fact that it was past three in the morning on a school night, he was really the only other person it could be. When the purple-haired boy looked up, he too seemed startled to see Izuku. Midoriya, you're awake. Kaminari wasn't kidding. Yep, Izuku sighed, reaching up to rub the ache out of his jaw. What brings you down here? Um, the drains on our whole floor are clogged, remember? Shenzo narrowed his eyes. Isn't that why you're here? I was staring at my teeth. Izuku looked back in the mirror and tilted his head. He would be due for another feeding soon. Maybe if he purposely didn't feed and then showed the others that he didn't have a reflection... No, that was potentially dangerous. 
Taima said that he had never attacked someone the way he did Izuku, but that didn't mean that Izuku had much control. Taima was hundreds of years old, and Izuku was just going to be 18 soon. I suppose eventually everyone will notice I don't age. Why are you staring at your teeth? Shinso stepped closer to the sinks and stopped at the one next to Izuku, putting down a small bag Izuku hadn't noticed him carrying. It held its toothbrush, toothpaste, and some floss. I'm trying to get my fangs to come down. Izuku side-eyed his neighbor to see if he had any reaction. Shinso rolled his eyes, bringing his toothbrush to his mouth. All right, don't tell me then. Izuku sighed. He took a somewhat deep breath in, sort of scenting the air. He could smell Shinso's blood under his skin, the way others might be able to smell perfume or cologne. So far, he hadn't smelled anything enticing the way Taima had described Izuku's blood back when he was still alive. Izuku did notice that the way a person's blood smelled had to do a bit with how powerful they were. He supposed it had to do with the energy that vampires could get from a person's blood. The more powerful they were, the more energetic they would feel for a longer time. Considering One for All ran through Izuku's DNA, he wasn't surprised that Taima hadn't been able to resist him. Also considering Izuku had only had it for a year by the time he was attacked, he wasn't surprised that another vampire hadn't smelled it first. Shinso's blood smelled appealing to Izuku. He'd always known that Shinso was more powerful than he gave himself credit for. In fact, almost everyone in Class 1A had appealing blood. The ones who definitely made him hungry a lot were Yamomo, Todoroki, Bakugo, and Kaminari. If Izuku was hungry and needed to feed, he always made sure to avoid them as much as possible, which was admittedly a bit hard. He'd never not been able to control himself, though, which was nice. He wouldn't ever want to be faced with the choice Taima had made, to kill someone or turn them inhuman. So you really don't sleep, then? Izuku turned to Shinso, blinking out of his haze. The purple-eyed boy appeared to be done with his dental routine and was now leaning against the sink next to Izuku's, watching him. Izuku would probably have blushed if he was able to anymore. He could mentally direct the blood in his body if he so wished, if, say, if he wanted sexual things, but otherwise, it simply worked to keep him alive. No, I really don't. Izuku shrugged. Part of being dead, I guess. Big mood. Shinzo shrugged, and gathered up his things and nodded to Izuku. Well, I'm gonna get what little sleep I can before school tomorrow. See you then, I guess. With that, he left Izuku alone in the bathroom, and the greenette turned to look in the mirror again, widening his jaw once more. It couldn't hurt to try one more time. Plus one. Attack. Deku, look out! Izuku turned around just in time to see the building above him beginning to collapse. He and his classmates were at the USJ to practice some rescue training. The first few times they had all returned, the class had been apprehensive to even enter the building. Now, though, most of them didn't bat an eye, even if they trained in the areas they had been trapped in during the USJ. The entire class was currently in the ruin zone, practicing rescuing dummies from crumbling buildings. On Izuku's team were Odro and Aoyama, neither of which would be able to block the sudden crumbling structure from squashing Izuku into the ground. He barely had a moment to blink before he found himself being buried underneath the rubble. He wasn't sure how long he was knocked out, only that when he came to, everything hurt. As a vampire, he was able to heal much faster than his human self had been able to. Unfortunately, it all had to do with how recently it fed. If he fed recently, he would heal very quickly. If he was hungry, it would be a much slower process, although still quicker than an average human. If he had lost blood, well, that made it even worse. The only way for a vampire to die was if they lost all the blood in their body. They reverted back to being a corpse in that case. It wasn't generally talked about, since it was hard to bleed a freaking vampire dry of blood, but in situations like this... Yeah, then it was a problem. He was aware of the blood pooling around his healing limbs, and from a few large gases on his torso. 
When he shifted the rubble that pinned him down, he found that some sort of structural beam had impaled him all the way through his middle, which was what was causing the majority of his injuries. He could vaguely hear his classmates screaming on the other side of the rubble, but he elected to ignore it for now. He was sure they were worried, seeing as though they were idiots who didn't recognize a vampire when they saw one, and didn't know that he would get himself out of this rubble as easily as if it were styrofoam. His only problem was knowing that he would have to quickly feed if he wanted to survive. Let's do this, he thought to himself, groaning from the pressure on his wounds when he forced himself to stand up. The rubble all around him fell away like pebbles, and Izuku pushed away what was remaining around him easily. He had to climb a bit onto fallen debris before he was in sight of the rest of his class, who were gathered around the area trying to dig through the rock. Aizawa, the teacher who had taken over their hero training after All Might's death, caught sight of Izuku immediately after he appeared. Midoriya! All eyes turned to Izuku many of them gasping in horror when they saw the beam that implanted itself in Izuku's side. The first one to his side was Ida, as he was the fastest of them all. Izuku found himself being swept into the boy's hold and jetted down the pile of stone in the blink of an eye, before Aizawa instructed him to gently lay Izuku on the ground. The smaller male resisted the urge to roll his eyes, and tried to sit up once Ida laid him down. Lay down, Midoriya! Kirishima pushed Izuku's shoulders back to the ground, with a surprising amount of force. A whisper of pain echoed through Izuku, making the boy scowl at the redhead. Sure, because bruising will help me, he snapped. Shut the fuck up, Deku! Bakugo snapped, kneeling directly at his side. The blonde began applying pressure to the massive wound in Izuku's left leg, trying to stop the bleeding. Someone call recovery girl, damn it! There's no need, Izuku whined, trying to sit up again. Kirishima held him down this time. What on earth are you talking about? Araka yelped tearfully. Of course we need to get you to recovery, girl. You could die. I'm not going to die, Izuku sighed. This time, he didn't bother trying to hide his strength. He sat up, causing Kirishima to flail for a moment at the sudden change in position. Please don't call recovery, girl. I don't need her. Problem, child. What are you talking about? Aizawa squinted at him, assessing him from head to toe. Izuku could already see a torn piece of his costume near his right ankle, where a wound had been minutes ago. The skin was clear now, although flecked with blood. I've been trying to tell everyone for months now! Izuku snapped. My problem is that I can't say the words out loud. Something stops me from it. Like, physically stops me from it. What do you mean? Kaminari's voice was higher than it usually was, likely from panic. Izuku's nostrils flared when the boy got closer. He and Koski were too close to him for Izuku not to crave their blood, especially now that he was closer to Ravenous than he had ever been. Losing too much blood whilst also being on the brink of needing to feed again was a bad sign. He locked eyes with Kachan, making his decision then and there. If there was anyone he trusted enough to take blood from, anyone who wouldn't flip out, or who would forgive him if they hurt him, then it was Kachan. Kachan, Izuku said. Trust me? Bakugo looked between Izuku's eyes, assessing the seriousness of the situation. After a moment, he nodded. Always. Good, Izuku said, moments before he lunged forward and grabbed the blonde by the throat. He barely had time to flinch before Izuku was unsheathing his fangs, being sure to flash them at the crowd around them before he embedded them into Kotsky's throat. He had a moment to will the sleeping agent in his veins to retreat before beginning to suck, drinking his fill directly from the vein in Kotsky's neck. His eyes slipped closed from bliss, the delectable taste of Bakugo's blood filling his mouth and settling in his stomach. He tasted somewhat sweet, like the nitroglycerin he produced. It was unexpected for sure, but not necessarily bad. Izuku usually hunted for victims around UA campus grounds, randomly picking through any students he found walking by themselves. He had yet to find one that was immune to his memory-erasing venom. Suddenly, he was ripped away from Kotsky's throat and pinned to the ground. 
Aizawa hovered over him with a dark expression on his face, his capture scarf primed to tie Izuku up if need be. Izuku was filled with the uncomfortable feeling of his largest wound trying to heal around the pipe still inside it. Obviously, it was unsuccessful. Who are you? The teacher growled, his eyes flashing red. Izuku rolled his eyes. I'm not some body shifter sensei, he protested. You saw me using my quirk before I went into the rubble. That doesn't prove anything. Todoroki snarled, already in a fighting stance nearby. The rest of their class mimicked the caution, on the verge of activating their quirks. All except for Kotsky, who had fallen back when Izuku was ripped away from him. He held one of his hands to his bleeding neck, staring at Midoriya like he was trying to figure something out. Izuku held his gaze, knowing that if anyone was going to believe him, it would be his childhood friend. Sensei, get off him, Kotsky said. Aizawa didn't so much as twitch. I can't... I can't do that, Bakugo, he replied. We don't know who this is or how big of a threat they are. It's fucking Deku, asshole! Kotsky lunged forward and tried to shove their teacher off Izuku. You don't think I'd know him on fucking sight? Get off of him! Maybe the bite did something to Bakugo, Yamamo said worriedly, eyeing Kotsky. Oi! I'm fucking peachy! Kotsky tried to move their teacher again, who whipped his head to face the blonde angrily. Sensei, let him go! It's Deku! Please! If there was one thing that Bakugo Kotsky never did, it was say please. Aizawa searched his student's face for a long moment, trying to decide if he should listen to him. Finally, after what seemed like forever, he eased his grip on Izuku. Don't think that for a second we won't be ready to attack you at a moment's notice, he warned. Talk. Now. Izuku scrambled away from their teacher, backing up until he and Kotsky were sitting side by side again. Okay, okay. He held his hands up in surrender. About a year ago, I was walking back to campus after visiting my mom. I was attacked before I even made it halfway. Were you given some sort of vampire quirk? Shoji asked, trying to understand. Izuku shook his head. No, the man was an actual vampire. He's over 300 years old. His name is Tayama. Do you have proof of this? Ida asked, pushing up his glasses. Do I have proof he was an actual vampire? Izuku laughed. Well, let's see. He's quirkless and turned me into a vampire. Is that enough? You said before that something was physically stopping you from telling us. Jiro commented, seeming a bit less suspicious than before. Why can you talk about it now, then? Because you already know, I guess? Izuku frowned. If you would all just think, you'd realize that I've been trying to tell you for months, all of you, and none of you ever got it. Do you know how frustrating that was? The garlic, Kotsky said, his eyes widening. Holy shit, I fucking knew you weren't allergic to garlic. Technically, I am now, Izuku clarified. It can't kill me, but it's not a fun experience. When you told me you were drinking blood during training, Kirishima said, pointing at Izuku, I thought you were fucking with me. You don't sleep, Shinso said slowly. You said that the dead don't need sleep. I thought that was a metaphor. You said that to me too, Kaminari gasped. Holy shit, that was months ago. And you're cold to the touch, Ojiro added, seemingly excited now. Oh my gosh, that's because you're dead! This... this really is the truth, Midoriya? Aizawa said slowly, seeming like he didn't want to believe it. Asuku nodded enthusiastically. Call Detective Sukuuchi. Ask me anything. Ask me something only I would know. What was the theme of my sixth birthday? Kotsky asked immediately. Izuku turned to him and grinned. All might, of course. Do something harder than that. Kirishima whined and turned to Izuku thoughtfully. Okay, 
what did you, me, Ruraka, and Asui promise to each other after we fought Overhaul? Azuku's amusement died at the serious reminder. We said that we would do our best to never let someone die on our watch again. That's true, Kittle. Sue cut in, nodding. What happened between you, me, and Ida in our first year? Todoroki asked. The stain incident? Izuku winked. What we did together, you mean? Well, that was suggestive. We aren't supposed to talk about that. Ida hissed, chopping his hand up and down. Although I must admit, only a few people know about the events of that day. I believe this is truly Midoriya. I'll set up a meeting with Suguchi just to be sure. Aizawa held a hand out to Izuku to help him up to his feet. When Izuku took it, the hero flinched a bit at the cold texture. And for the love of God, do something about the pipe in your stomach. Oh, right. Izuku got to his feet and grabbed the pipe with both hands, sliding it out of his body with a disgusting sound. Ruraka turned around, looking a little green. Ashido patted her back, unable to look at the movement either. Once the piece of jagged metal was out of Izuku's body, the wound it had created began to knit itself back together, quickly now that he had some powerful blood inside of him. Oh, Kachan! He turned to look at Bakugo, who was still holding his hand over his bleeding throat. Come here, I can close the wound. Katsuki seemed suspicious, but he stepped forwards anyway, taking his hand off the bite marks. Izuku leaned forward and licked a strip over the area, cleaning a bit of the excess blood as well. Kotsky's entire body shuddered as he ripped away from Izuku with a shocked expression. What the fuck? My saliva will heal it. Izuku held up his hand in surrender. I promise, I wasn't doing anything weird. Your wound is gone. Hagakure pointed a gloved hand at Izuku's torso. Everyone looked to see where the gaping hole had been moments earlier, only to find smooth, pale skin. Once upon a time, Izuku's skin had been somewhat dark, but after he turned, he became pretty pale. How no one had noticed that was beyond him. Freaky, Sato muttered. What a mad banquet of darkness. Tokoyomi shook his head. Dark Shadow was staring at Izuku with wide eyes a huge smile on their beaked face. Clearly, they were interested in Izuku's newfound status as not human. I have so many questions! Ashido gushed, bounding to Izuku's side to hook her arm in his. The rest of the class began to chatter along with her, throwing question after question Izuku's way. The boy felt a little dizzy trying to keep up with them all, although privately, he felt immense relief. Although he'd known his classmates would accept him no matter what, it was one thing to suspect it, and another thing to know for sure. I really think everything is going to be okay. It was the best day Izuku had in a long time. And that brings us to the finale of the 1.5k special. This, this was... Ooh, this is, this is a lot of work, and I haven't even edited two of the videos, and, like, but this, I, I'm glad I got to do, like, something special for this, because I didn't do anything for 1k, and I'm just so, like, this is amazing. I'm so glad people actually like listening to me do this. And you can thank Melbury Stars for this recommendation. I read this fic, like, a year ago, but I forgot to bookmark it, despite how much I loved it. Like, seriously, this is such a fun concept. I'm so glad that, like, I got to podfic this for you all, and I hope you enjoyed, because, like, they were so oblivious, it's like, I'm drinking blood. Oh, cool smoothie! Like, <laughs> to their uh, class 1A, just, like, being super oblivious, and Izuku being like, I am a vampire, and they're like, yeah, cool, cool, bro. Uh, it's great, I love this fic. Uh, yeah. Hope you guys have a good day, so bye!